You wrote a letter to the president calling for the increased adoption of emerging technologies in learning, mm -hmm. especially in universities in Uganda. Uh, you talked about uh, artificial intelligence, immersive technology, blockchain, quantum computing, and machine learning. Mm -hmm. Why are these technologies important? I, I didn't even call for increase. <laughs> to even start. To start. Yeah, because we are really, really lagging behind. Mm. Now, why are they very important? Uh, one, I'll give you something very, very tangible. Uh, I think uh, Minister of Finance would be really happy to hear this. Now, if you look at uh, the global GDP yeah. today, it is hovering around 100 trillions, around 100 trillions. But the traditional economy, mm. traditional has been contributing to that, okay? But right now, the disruptive, transformative innovation technologies, what uh, in summer I would say disruptive technologies, yes. are now contributing 13 trillions just as of now, okay? And that has happened in only the last three years. So that is closer to 13%, right, of the global GDP. Indeed. Now you ask yourself, are we represented as a country, Uganda, within that disruptive technology, global GDP? What is our share? Probably nil, zero. But the, the, the good news is, for the rest of the world that has adopted technology is that by 2030, global GDP is estimated to be around 300 trillion. Mm. And guess what disruptive innovation technologies will contribute? 200 trillions. That is almost 70 percent. And then you ask yourself a question. Is Uganda represented? Now you can see the 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 contribution of the traditional economy as we know it, coffee, cotton, copper, uh, agriculture as we know it, and other things, is shrinking. Technology is taking a bigger what? Chunk. 200 trillion in, trillions in 2030. And that means they are leaving the traditional economy, which we knew for, with only 100. And that's where we are as Uganda. So we are being pushed out of the global GDP, slowly but sure. And if I, if I were uh, Minister of Finance, I would be worried now. So that's why it is very, very important that we embrace these technologies because they are reducing cost, they are making countries more productive, they are making these countries more aspirational to create things that we have never seen to make life better for the population and make countries rich. This sounds ideal, but for not, an average, not ideal, real. It, it's <laughs> real for other countries. Indeed, not us. For the uh, for for the average student, mm. why should they adopt these technologies, and what value are they going to add mm. to the learning experience for these particular students? Okay, now very very simple. Uh, to today, everyone sings mm. unemployment in this country. Okay, mm. that means the traditional economy, as we know it, is not creating jobs. And that is tied into the education system itself. The way it is set up, the way it is built, the way it is constructed and conceptualized, it doesn't create jobs. It is creating people who are professional job seekers. Yeah. Okay? But if we transformed ourselves into a technologically-led economy, you are giving a chance to all young people to be educated, immersed within these technologies. And they are creating jobs in in the process of really having these uh, technologies. We, previously, we didn't know if there was someone called a TikToker. Right now, people are earning money by being TikTokers, being bloggers. You can go on and on. AI is helping people make money, millions of money. So the only chance that is an equalizer for everyone, white, black, a Chinese, or anyone, is these emerging technologies, because no one actually can claim to be a master of it today. So a young person of Uganda has a chance. And here is the, the, how we are fortunate, or the chance we have, that uh, globally, we command the youngest population in the world. 
and people who are conversant with technology who can adapt it very fast are the young people. So we stand a huge chance. We have a huge resource in the name of the young people. So that's where government needs to take advantage. And the young person should embrace this because the old economy you used to, you used to, there are no jobs for you. Within the technologically uh, developed economy, there are so many jobs you create. You'll become millionaires. You'll become billionaires. We are going to see the new a new crop or breed of billionaires in dollars, not in shillings, just because of technology. So that's why everyone should be really, really concerned and should be excited. And you look at young people today, if you went to all universities, they can fail to have what to eat, but they have a smartphone, <laughs> right? So meaning technology is what they know Indeed. and they can use it. We can only support them as government and higher education institutions and even other education institutions to make proper use of the, the technologies they have. So in other words, it's an opportunity that's there for the taking. It's a huge opportunity. But for a university that is steeped in traditional operations, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. what will it take for them to adopt to these emerging technologies, keeping in mind that it could be a steep cost for the university itself, mm -hmm. the student and also the guardians? Uh, so, some things are, myth, uh, are just a myth, let me tell you. Yes, technology is very expensive, but compared to what? Now, if they told you that uh, you, ha you have an illness, right, but the drug you have to take to cure that illness is going to cost you millions, you cannot compare millions to life. Right now, we are under attack. We either embrace or we stagnate. So what do we choose? So every university we should now prioritize. And this is doable. Do doable. We are doing it at Victoria University. Indeed. We are not government funded. We are private. We survive on tuition. Okay? But we just need to teach what is relevant to these students. Allow them to embrace technology. Allow them to use technology. Uh, in the near future, July 23rd, we are embracing, we are actually launching uh, an artificial intelligence uh, program uh, where our students are going to be taking AI uh, programs and they get certified, okay, uh, by different international bodies by getting this competence and for free. And we are actually hoping we may even open it up to the public. Why? Because that's the pain we are looking at. Indeed. As a university, we need to help to transform society. So maybe we'll even open it up to interested students from other universities to come and do this because you don't train people to just sit at home. You train people to, to benefit their country. So universities should simply change their mindset. These things are doable. For example, instead of spending money on things, for example, like uh, answer sheets for students to, to practice a skill that is outdated, handwriting, because no one wants a report that, or, that is handwritten. So remove that money, digitize everything, let students have these skills, save money, invest in technology. It's doable. Professor, if the government was to make these technologies a standard in mm. all universities, mm. how much of a dramatic change or impact would it have on the learning process and also the workplace? And especially places that are probably not uh, exposed to these technologies and it's not a common place. I, I, I really, really understand, but uh, I also want to draw you and uh, the viewers to a time when there was no education at all. So, and then it came, yeah. and everyone ad 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 adopted everything. We, ad we had to adapt. So, uh, one thing I know for sure is that uh, these ventures or initiatives are not cheap, but good things are very expensive. Transformative things sometimes are very expensive, and government needs to prioritize this. That is the only way we are going to make Uganda rich. That's the only way we have a chance to not catch up, but be among the, the game players. So if we want to play the game, then we have to prioritize to intentionally invest in technology, because otherwise we are going to play a catch-up game and no one will ever catch up. And if you look at what is being developed today, AI, machine learning, blockchain, these things are changing the way we do business, Indeed. the way we do things. AI is going to be thinking and learning better than a human being. All right? So if, if that is going to happen, then if you are a president, what people are you leading? Indeed. That AI can actually out number in terms of thinking, in terms of doing, so meaning you bring it on board, 
and you'll get rid of people and it will become more productive. So these people will become more unemployed. But we have a chance. The more we expose these technologies to our people, technology will not replace them. The people will have ad adopted this, gotten used to it. They will use technology to their advantage to become more productive themselves, their communities, their country, and will all be And for wealthy. the future, indeed. Professor, let's look at the risk and challenges mm. of some of these technologies. Yes. Uh, for example, the lack of a legal framework for operationalization. Yeah. One would look at that as a risk not worth taking mm. and say it's easy just to leave it alone and not have that such a problem. Yeah. Uh, if just, uh, just flash back a little bit yeah. and if you were there on the day, the first airplane was invented, and they told you it is going to fly with you. <laughs> what would you have thought? I would say, have okay, thought it was, it was crazy. There is a chance it is going to crash. Yes. It will fall and I will die, right? Mm. That's what we are thinking right now. But there is a reason why we also trust our government, that you are going to regulate this, mm. to make it ethical, ethical use, to make it something that is supporting our economy. Uh, Policies have to be put in place, regulations have to be in place, so, and it's only government that can help us to do this and educate people how to ethically, how to properly, how to follow the law in using these technologies. If other people have done this in other countries, I believe in Ugandans that we are better than so many people in the world, mm. so many people. So we learn better, we do better things. So. You can't tell me that we can't put technology to better use. We Prof will, and Professor, the government can guide us. Professor, if your proposals mm. were taken up, yeah. how and when will it take for this dream that you have to be in fruition? Like I, I, I earlier said, uh, if uh, the leadership today wills and determines yes. and prioritizes technology and comes up with... Uh, uh, some kind of uh, emerging technologies uh, agents of some sort, or even leverage existing frameworks, right, Te uh, institutions, and we start investing in these technologies. Even in five years, you, you look at, look at uh, Singapore, look at Saudi Arabia, look at uh, UAE, Dubai. Now, they are making agriculture very productive, Everything they do is cost effective. They are do, do, making their health sector very productive, doing amazing things. They are doing every sector of their economy work. Why? Because of technology. So five years, 10 years, we will be actually so advanced. We just need to start now. And now means now. Indeed, Professor. Thank you so much for talking to us. It's been enlightening. Always a pleasure, Idris. Thank uh, you very much.